stage arts. What exactly are backstage arts? The way that I like to think of backstage arts is everything that goes into creating a theatrical performance. This includes designing the set, building the set, painting the set, lighting the set, finding props and costumes, creating special stage effects, and everything that leads to that rich and amazing opening night. I've been performing in musical theater for 11 years now, and I absolutely love it. It feels like home, and I feel like I'm in my own amazing world whenever I see a performance that I work on so hard, come up in life, even if there are only 15 people in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I've been the assistant stage manager at my theater, the Saddle River Youth Theater in Allenville, New Jersey, for four years now, and I began to learn the basic secrets of the backstage. I learned how things work and how things don't work. As a performer, and with my limited knowledge of seeing set pieces and theatrical effects created from the sidelines, my four years as stage manager has opened my eyes to how amazing the process is, and I decided to use my senior project to take that next step into the amazing world of theater by working on projects on my own and learning new skills that I've never had an opportunity to pursue before. After many shows that I worked on throughout this project, which I will talk about in a moment, I was given the opportunity to work with Miss Nussbaum on designing the set for the 10th grade play, Twelfth Night. Although in the end a simpler set was opted for due to lack of time, it was still a great opportunity to explore the process of designing a set. I first watched the show online and I created a list of scenes and specific set pieces that would be required for the show. I then did some brainstorming, and I decided that the way I saw the show, especially with the incredible artistic talent of the students in this school, was to have whole sets painted onto flats of wood. I then did some basic brainstorming and decided that the way I saw the show, especially, uh, my <laughs> I designed a type of triangular structure of flats, which I imagined would spin around and fit together like a puzzle to show these landscapes and interiors that I imagined. I also envisioned that the middle set piece would open up to reveal a fourth landscape or interior. This was my first drawing of what I imagined the palace to look like. As you can tell, I am not one of those incredibly artistically competent students. But I got the point across. After showing it to my mentor, he gave me some tips on how it could be better. He told me that changing the perspective and moving everything up on the design could allow furniture and actors to be in front of the paintings without blocking them. This is the second drawing of what I imagined. It was a great experience to go through the process of designing a set, and it is something that sparked my interest for future work, for sure. In the summer of 2017, my first show of my senior project went up, and this was Peter Pan. Now, I had done Peter Pan many times in the past, and I knew one very exciting thing about Peter Pan that I would be able to work on, and that is stage flying. <laughs> I was lucky enough to experience firsthand how a stage flying rig is set up by professional stage flying experts. These guys were incredibly knowledgeable. We first carried extremely heavy carts up the steps of the theater, I think my back still hurts from that. But uh, <laughs> I learned how to use a special wrench, and I put together rigs like IKEA furniture, uh, with many nuts and bolts and screws, and a very specific list of instructions. We then assembled the long poles that would soon support the weight of the children. I was then taught how to string the thin black wires through the poles, and I learned that to organize them, you do not wrap them around your elbow and shoulder, <laughs> even though that's what I've been doing my whole life. But apparently over time, it creates bends and jumps in the wires, and these wires are not cheap. So instead I learned to make either a circle or a figure eight on the floor, and continually trace the rest of the wire around that figure to organize it. After the man from the company, his mate in a full hazmat suit, we fed the wire up through holes created in the ceiling by a large drill head and he attached them to a heavy support beam installed in the attic. Having the wire securely attached to the poles, 
you began to hoist them up to the ceiling, little by little. The way that the ropes and wires worked stopped the poles from going down when the hoisting ropes weren't being pulled on, and it avoided the risk of injury if the poles were somehow not held up by us, because these poles were not light. <coughs> it was a long and tedious process, but we made it very fun. Having the flying system installed, after over 25 hours of work spread across three days, the flying crew, including me, learned how to use the harnesses and safely fly the children. <laughs> the first rule of flying the children that we were told many times was drilled into our head, you never say the word drop, <laughs> because it terrifies the children. So instead, you say the word lower. <laughs> Learning the flying choreography took hours of tedious practice with the child actors, the flying crew, and the flying director from the flying company. But eventually, we learned it very well. For Peter Pan, I also learned how to build my first set piece with the theater's carpenter. The set piece was the house that the Lost Boys build for Wendy. And the idea of the piece was for it to have many detachable parts for the actors to assemble on stage very easily. The first step of the process was to gather materials. We used a lot of super thin wood to reduce the weight and held it together with a skeleton of thicker solid wood. I learned how to measure and cut wood using the electric cir circular saw, and learned how to put together a structure using screws, nails, and glue. I also worked on much of the set painting. The back wall of Perfect Stripes was a very tedious project. Here's what the set and show looked like. I was backstage lifting Wendy, the girl in the back, all the way on your left. trying there'd be no way to know. It looked super bland and boring in the beginning, 
So I used the lighter blue material, which I cut into strips and applied in a wave fashion to the back of the cape, as you can see there. Seeing that it looked very cool, it was time for decorations. I went up to our booth and collected as much obvious human-like stuff as I could and got to work. <coughs> Using a staple gun and some blue wire, I decked the bunk beds out with treasures and objects, and it came out looking great. The other side was Ursula Flair. For this, I made use of an amazing material, sheets of set material bought in certain textures and colors with a back that is very similar to aluminum foil, which makes it very moldable and bendable. The only downside to this material is that if you happen to slide your hand across the edge of it, you will get the worst paper cut of your life. I applied it to the other side of the bunk beds, and this was the finished product. This project taught me a lesson on how you never know if something will look good on stage or a set piece until you apply it and see how it looks. I also did a fair share of painting for Little Mermaid. I was given the job of choosing colors and designs for the plants and animals on the back wall. I chose some bright coral colors and got to work. I decided to add the texture to a few of them to make them pop, and it certainly did the job. I also made this snail. <laughs> <laughs> the Little Mermaid gave me the opportunity to make a set piece all on my own, something I could call my own, and explore set painting to a higher degree. And I think that the set turned out great. The Winter Show was Elf the Musical. This set was mostly done with intricate painting. One side of the back wall was Santa's workshop. I realized Working on painting on this, I realized that many of the skills I have in creating straight lines and shapes on set pieces come from my work on my 10th grade floor mat I made in art class. Um, the other side of the wall was done by a group of professional painters. You are not going to believe me, but they were in and out of the theater in three hours, and they left this behind. Uh, I had the amazing opportunity of watching them work, and I learned a technique that they use that they call smudging, that creates the look of the snow on the trees with the green still visible behind it, giving it that tree texture. Another commonly used theatrical effect is confetti. Don't even get me started on cleaning up the confetti after the show. <laughs> but it sure does look cool. The confetti cannon uses compressed nitrogen to burst confetti pieces out into the air, then float down, like snow. I learned how to set it off by pulling the string down and away. Not only <laughs> did I get to continue my education on backstage arts, but I also got to indulge in onstage arts for this show. <laughs> Having this experience of the art form that I enjoy so much from a different hands-on perspective really opened my eyes to how truly passionate I am about theater and working on theatrical performances. Having this extra knowledge and experience in the backstage arts will surely move me forward in my future work, both on stage and backstage. My love for the art has multiplied, and I have found a form of work that does not feel like work, especially with an amazing team of people backing me and helping me and supporting me all the way through. I would like to thank a few people for making this project possible. I'd like to thank Chris Barker for mentoring me through this project, and being the best director and employer I could ask for. Unfortunately, you couldn't make it today, but I thank you, Chris. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank everybody at the Saddle River Youth Theater for giving me a second home for the past 11 years and forming friendships that I know will last a lifetime. I would also like to thank Mr. Rowe for being my in-school mentor and not getting upset when I miss our snack and lunchtime meetings over and over again <laughs> due to my forgetfulness. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> and also for being a very supportive and helpful person in the process of getting this presentation ready and being a very caring teacher and a close friend. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. At this time, I'd like to answer any questions.
surprised you when you were there? Surprised me? Yeah, uh, she asked, what was something about backstage arts that really surprised me? <coughs> one thing, I didn't realize how long it takes to do all these things, for, for one. Because um, I, I, as a, a, my, when I was a stage manager, well, I'm still a stage manager, but before I did this project, I was always given little projects to do, but I didn't realize how much actual thinking and effort it takes into imagining what what you want people to do, how you want the set to look, if that answers the question. Did you get to do any lighting or sound work? Did I get to do any lighting or sound work? I did not, but my internship is at um, the Elmwood Theater. Uh, it starts next week, and I will be working on lighting design with them. So I'm really looking forward to that, because I have not had much experience with lighting design. What was your favorite show to get the chance to work on? Oh, my favorite show this year? Um, that's hard to say. Peter Pan was incredible because seeing how that stage flying rig was set up was such a good experience. But I also loved being Buddy the Elf, so... <laughs> <laughs> Dream role. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I've been helping with the set for years, but for this project and really delving into it, I had a total of, let's see, four shows. After doing such extensive backstage work with your project, uh, which would you rather be, in front, on stage, or backstage? That show? is a difficult question to answer, <laughs> because I love working backstage, um, because you're really setting it up you, you're helping so many people on stage get to where they need to be and making the set look incredible for everybody. But I'm also a natural performer, <laughs> so I love performing. So if I had to choose, I think I'd still stick with on stage work. But luckily, it's not a black and white thing. I can do both. How has your backstage work informed or changed your perspective as an actor? Let's see. She asked how my backstage work in, uh, changes or informs my onstage work. Um, well, for one, I have much more of an appreciation for everything that I used to take for granted a little bit, like how great the set will look, how where, where the props are, knowing where you know how difficult it is to find the props, and everything like that. So I think it gives me a little bit more incentive to to do the best I can on stage because I know how much work is put into it. Even though it's fun for everyone, I know how much time and effort it does take to make these shows possible. What made me want to start acting? Well, <laughs> I was always a very dramatic child. <laughs> When I was seven years old, um, my mom saw an advertisement. They were doing Grease, the musical. I'm sure you're all very familiar with it. And I gave it a try, and I fell in love instantly. And I've only missed a few shows in the past 11 years that my theater has done that I've been old enough to do. So if that answers your question, just I love performing. What? what? Um, what was the biggest mistake you made learning the backstage stuff? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the biggest mistake I have made backstage? All right, I'll think about that one. Because there are quite a few. <laughs> um, okay, well, I had to pull the confetti cannon as Buddy the Elf in a very short amount of time, I had to run off stage, and then it, it's supposed to be that I was shredding a very important book, um, and I was supposed to pull the confetti cannon, and I was, you know, it was a very hectic situation, and I had the confetti cannon, and I accidentally pointed it right at the curtain when I pulled it, <laughs> so only a little bit went off, and the rest of it was flying back to the wing, which we have to clean up after the show. Uh, so that's pretty bad. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, this will be the last question. How many shows have I been in in my lifetime? Uh, I have a list, actually, on my phone. But uh, <laughs> I believe I'm up to 58. 